it always amazes me at different times when I get a certain amount of correspondence coming in that people will ask certain questions that all seem to always go back to a base root. There's always some beginning foundation stone, so to speak, that determines whether a person understands or misunderstands God and how he operates and what the scripture says and what the Bible says. Because, you see, in Genesis, we're told, in the beginning, God. Well, there's a good theme there, if you could take that to your own personal understanding of how God operates and what God does. In everything that you start, remember Genesis 1. In the beginning, God. If you do that, then everything you do in the beginning of it, you'll go to God. You'll seek Him to know Him, to hear what He has to say, to understand what He's doing. Because often people get in God's way by thinking they know what God might say or God might do. And that's kind of a religious thing, is that once a person's been either saved for a while or they don't know God or they have an improper knowledge of our Father in Heaven, then what they do often is that they take that little bit they know and they run with it. They apply it to every single circumstance of their life and then they don't take the time to maybe spend time with God. We should always, ever and always, all the days of our life, be seeking to know God better. Now, some people, I'll admit, they don't know God at all, so the reality is, is that you, you really have to seek the Lord while He may be found and begin to disciple yourself or teach yourself or even learn you know, who God is, what God is, and how God operates. I mean, there's a wealth of material everywhere, you know, that you can make available to yourself to understand that God is real. Because the Bible doesn't try to explain that God is real. I mean, we don't have to either. God is real. That's just blunt, obvious fact. Now, if you don't know that, then go prove it. You know, do whatever it takes for yourself to prove that there is a living God, that there is a being that's greater than you are, that created the heavens and the earth, and that created you. Take the time, make the time, whatever it takes, as long as it takes, but choose to prove that. Because if you can't prove it, then don't do it. That's the reality. If you can't find for yourself that saving faith or that saving grace that God has given you to discover that God is real, then maybe, you know, no offense, you're barking up the wrong tree and you're heading in the wrong direction, but you're just not going to believe. But if you don't know God, then take the time to do that. Now, once you do know God, then begin to learn more about Him because your understanding of God, your definition of who God is, is going to determine the direction you go. The more that you learn, the better your understanding and comprehension will be and the easier it will be for you to live your life godly which is God-directed, God-inspired, God-motivated, and even God-intervening in your life. Because if you really want God in your life, that's what you have to do. You have to take Genesis 1-1 as a reality check. In the beginning, God. Now that's for the unbeliever. Now for the believer, for the Christian, who's either been a Christian for a while or is a baby Christian, Learn the basics first, and you'll always go farther and faster than most people around you if you take, in the beginning, God to everything you do, everything you say, everything you think, and every way you go. Because God will acknowledge that and begin to increase your understanding of Him and the revelation of what He's doing all around you as well as inside you. You just have to acknowledge Him in everything. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 talks about that, and you can look that up and read it for yourself. That way you get a complete understanding of it. But the reality is always going to be, for you and for me, in the beginning, God. Because if we don't have a good understanding of who God is, if we don't begin to know who we're following or what we're doing, then we'll never know what God's will is for us. Now, 
to save a lot of time, Jesus made it pretty blunt about what God's will for us, that we should know him. Jesus said, this is the will of God, that you would know him and he who sent, and he who was sent by him. Meaning, A, God's will is to know God, the Father. B, is to know Jesus. Now, this whole idea of, well, I know about him, is probably where you're at. Most people know about God because they have this kind of understanding religiously of God, but they don't intercommunicate with God in order for God to explain who he is. And that's why we need his spirit to teach us, to lead us, to guide us. That's why we ask God himself to say, hey, God, look, I don't know you. Now, will you please explain yourself to me, or will you teach me, would be a better way to say it. So, God begins to do that, but then he also is so much in love with his son that he begins to reveal his son to you, because if you want to know the Father, being God, you look at the Son, and when you do, you have seen the Father. So we have a way of seeing him in a way we can understand, because God is hard to understand. He's so much bigger than we are. He's so much greater than we are. His high, his understanding is beyond our understanding. His comprehension is beyond ours. He's such a supreme being that we can't even get a handle on him. But in the way that he limited himself in presenting himself to us so that we could understand, he became flesh. And in becoming flesh, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. So we look at Jesus and we listen to him, and Jesus says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So, to know God, we start by knowing Jesus, and as you learn about him, as you follow him, as you talk to him, then Jesus will reveal the Father to you, and begin to implore you, and ask you, and show you to seek to know God, your Father. So, in the beginning, God will always answer all of what you need to know as far as God's will, God's purpose, and God's desire for you. In daily light, understanding what the will of the Lord is. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto you. This is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ, who now is sent. If you want to understand really what eternal life is, it's summed up in that statement. That is eternal life, to know God. God wants to fellowship with you. God wants to walk with you. God wants to talk with you. God wants to reveal himself to you. God said, I will be known of all men. So when you die, you will discover that you are not going to terminate your existence. You are a spiritual being that is going to exist for a very long time. And as such, you're either going to be in eternal damnation in a lake of fire because you're so corrupted that you can't be in God's presence, or you're going to be in God's presence eternally knowing him and discovering and being revealed through the ages what he is, how he is, and what he's like. Because you will exist with him in eternity. That is the reality of eternal life. If you want to know what's going to happen, we're going to go through ages to ages to ages to ages of life, constantly revealed of who God is, constantly unveiling himself in ways as we begin to comprehend him in a beautiful succeeding succession, or ages to ages, succession of existence that we go through in knowing him. And it's not a reincarnation thing, which is why they tried to distort that, you know, ages to ages life into something that was like really weird. And it's not some kind of like God-like thing, like the Mormons try to say, become like us. But no, it's just you getting to know someone in a more personal, intimate way, even as you do with in this life right now, in this physical existence that you exist in and you live in, when you get to know your spouse or a friend, you get to know them a little bit at a time, and then you keep growing in that knowledge of it. We know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God, and this is eternal life. 
that is what we are called to do, to know him. Because as you know him, then you will do what he wants you to do. He'll tell you personally. If you don't know him, don't go running around telling everyone what you think you know, because you don't know. But when you know him, go tell. What you do know, tell. That's how simple it is. If you don't know, then study to show thyself approved, to work and need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, that you might prove what is the perfect and acceptable will of God in Christ Jesus. Because otherwise, if you don't know God, then you're not going to be able to share anything about God. You're just going to share your ideas and not the reality of what you are experiencing with him on a day-to-day -day basis. We do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of our glory, give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe. We are more than persuaded that neither height nor depth nor principalities nor things above nor things below will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus. Jesus draws us to turn to him with a perfect love that casts out all fear so that we could come to him with great joy and love, receiving forgiveness and mercy and grace. For we have a need to turn to God and to receive from him his mercy, his kindness, his gentleness, his peace. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Enoch walked with God. Can two walk together except they be agreed? It is good for me to draw near to God. The Lord is with you while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. When they in their trouble did turn him to the Lord, God of Israel, and sought him, he was found of them. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then you shall call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all of your heart. There is never a time that God will ignore you, or you need to implore more than what you can do. But you need to ask him, and you need to seek him until you find him. Because he can be found if you would ask with all your heart. If you really desire to know him, he will be seen heard, understood, and comprehended, because Jesus said, the man that comes unto me, I will in no wise cast out. At the end of the book of Revelation, it says, the spirit and the bride say, come, and he that is thirsty, come, and let him that desireth, come. God says, come unto me. God is available to all men, to any man at any point in time, to come unto him and to be saved. For that salvation is the knowledge of himself and the reality of his son whom he sent. And as you get to know him, then you'll be able to share what is God's will, which is to know God in a personal, intimate way. It is about relationship. It always has been. How is your relationship with God today? Are you in conversation with him? Have you talked to him today? Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. This is the faith that passes all understanding. This is our faith that will change the world. This is the realization of what God can do in the very temple of the Holy Spirit that you are. And that is by God being in us. God being with us. God being for us. And God being all about us. That we know him and he knows us, and we are in relationship with him to a salvation that will change the world and cause many to be drawn unto him. Not all will be saved, and that's a tragedy, and the sadness of it is that there are people that will die for eternity, be separated from God and from us forever. But the joy that we have is that in the knowledge of God that we can learn now, that we can experience now, that we can walk in the truth of now, we can ask Jesus to reveal himself to us. 
And not only will he stand at the door and knock, but as we open up the door to him, he will come in and sup with us and reveal his father to us.